It's Madden NFL 22, and we'll see who rules the skies in today's battle. It's the Cardinals and the Eagles, and it's coming up next. It's the NFL on EA Sports as you take a look there at Lincoln Financial Field in Philadelphia, PA. Today, we've got a good NFC matchup on tap between the Arizona Cardinals and the Philadelphia Eagles. Set to go now on a beautiful, sunny afternoon. And off we go from Lincoln Financial Field. And we will not get a run back here to start. It's a touchback, and it will come out to the 25. So out come the Cardinals now for their opening drive. And here's a look at their leader, standing 6-4. And what I enjoyed in preparing for this game was talking not just with the coaching staff, but with him as well. And I found it interesting that the coaching staff sees him one way, and he sees himself in an entirely different way. Yeah, one thing he said he's always working on, he's, we know he's not bad at this, but his footwork always wants to improve that, and that's something he's going to focus on here. And what was so funny, what the offensive coordinator say right off the top, he's got great footwork. Love his footwork. So this guy is never satisfied. And throwing to start the drive, but that one incomplete. A lot of times it's that first read that you have. Maybe you get it in pre-snap. He locked in on his target, but he was covered quite well, and that one's incomplete. Following the incomplete pass, here they go again. Second and 10 from the 25. Here's Cunningham from the gun. He's got Smith here. And he gets this up to the 34 out of bounds there. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. And Brandon, as you know, sometimes it's a lot tougher to run with these tight ends nowadays in the NFL, but just bigger wide receivers. He lined up on the left side of the formation, ran a drag ball across the field, and tried to work his way open. He was able to make the catch, but the defenders were there, couldn't do a whole lot with it afterwards. Goes right back to Smith again. And he is going to have a Cardinals first down by a couple of yards as they're able to convert there on third and one. That throw's not going to get them a whole lot, but that really didn't matter, did it? They got what they needed on that throw. Picked up the first down, and I'm going cliche here. Game of inches, partner. Absolutely. Well, and you talked to me a lot about opening drives, how key those are to set the tone. You kept the drive alive. Third down conversion here is big. Wide of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. a yard here to the 38. Well, it's hard to have vision as a runner and find a hole when there's nothing but defenders in your way. They stacked that one up really well. But give him credit. Instead of trying to bounce it out and turn it into a big play, which might have turned into a big loss, Kai just took his medicine there and took the one yard. Cunningham to throw. A dump off to Anderson. And he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. The result, only four yards there on the play. And that'll make it third down. Was that a receiver? <laughs> yeah, actually it was. It was a running back who was a receiver on the play. I think he's been spending time in the receiver drills getting his feet down. Well, those guys out of the backfield, they're going to be good agile with their feet. He showed the agility there with a the toe tap. No doubt about it. It's like he'd run to ballet school. Got the toes down and stayed in bounds. And now following the incomplete pass, we'll get a timeout here for an injured player. Well, he gets attended to. We'll step aside. Here comes the Cardinals punter now. As the first drive of the game stalls out, he's on to punt. And the fair catch is taken at about the 13-yard line here. So here are the Eagles now backed up to start their first drive. And they will be let out by their 6-4 quarterback. And what's a quarterback's best friend? 
balance? I think you're right. <laughs> I agree with you. You know, a lot of guys would say great receiver, right? A terrific offensive line. But I agree with you, balance, because if you can run the ball effectively, that just opens things up for guys who want to throw it and gives you easier passing lanes and easier coverages to read. And they said balance will be a focus in this one. Yeah, they don't want it all just heaped on his shoulders, I don't believe. I think they want to make sure they take some of the pressure off. They'll throw on first down with Aikman. He's got the hook up here to Deshaun Jackson. And able to get this one out just shy of the 25 at the 24. I don't care who you put on him, he's going to be a handful of one-on-one -on -one throws. Yeah, right now, you're right. They're in man-to-man, -man, maybe need some safety help. I would say that'd be a good idea. Double-team him somehow. I'm going to have to make someone else beat me rather than let him shred my defense. Looking to pass, Aikman on first down. Buying time to his left. And he'll even avoid the contact in the end as he will finally slide to a hole. A big play there on the scramble. Partner, it's often the man coverage is easier for a quarterback to run against. You get your receivers going downfield. Those guys are staying with them, and oftentimes they have their back to the quarterback, which opens up a lot of space and room, and they don't even know that he's taken off with it. What a big-time pickup on that play. So the big play gets him across midfield now for first and 10. From the shotgun, Aikman. Looking left side, he's got it complete. That catch good for only a couple. Second and eight. Here's Aikman setting to throw it. Now he's forced out left. And he will slide to a stop. He does have the first down. Containing him is becoming a big problem. We've already seen this once earlier on this drive. Yeah, and so now two times this has happened. Do you adjust something? Yeah, I think you do. I think you have to start thinking about your rush lanes. Try not to either get too wide or too narrow. Make sure someone is there waiting for him to take off. Now the first carry for LaShawn McCoy. And all the way down inside the five to the four. Well, there's plenty of real estate for him to maneuver on that run. And let's face it, it shouldn't be a surprise. He's one of the better backs in the league. Had to come into this game with the idea, slow him down. Otherwise, it's going to be a long afternoon. First and goal from just inside the five. They'll run with Montgomery. And he's in. Touchdown, Eagles. Taking it in from four yards out. And the Eagles have taken the early lead. An ideal start for them, really. You force the punt, and then you go down and score. And you've got to see a fist pump on the sideline from the head coach, don't you? Because he's turned into his bench, and he's telling his team, this is how we prepare. Force the punt, go downfield and score. I told you guys, it's just like a boxer in the gym preparing for the fight. Now we get to turn it all loose. Extra point splits the uprights, and it's now a 7 nothing game. That time, a six-play drive. Results in a four-yard touchdown run. the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. 
And this will not be returned. It'll come out to the 25. So the Cardinals offense back onto the field here for their second drive of the game. And hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys. Win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs. And that's what they need in order to not punt the ball again. First carry of the ball game now. It's C.J. Anderson. And he's upended at the 33, following a good pickup of eight. That's a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. And he'll be taken down right around the 34 after a pickup of only a yard. The good run on first down followed up by a not-so-good run on second down. Now let's find out they're going to stick with the run here on third down. A lot of people would like to see some good action here. I say go with your best running play and your best blocker. After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. Cardinal football here to start quarter number two as they've got it with a third down coming up. Takes it inside the 40. A big play there on the catch and run. I don't care how many times we see it, I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass trick in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. So from Philadelphia territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 39-yard line. Off the option, he'll try and run with it. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. No gain there as he kept it himself at second down. Well, for that being an option play, there really weren't too many options available for him, were there? No, there weren't. And at least he was able to get back to the line of scrimmage. So he didn't lose anything, but you're exactly right. Nowhere to go. Now Cunningham looking for Bolden, and it's intercepted. Picked off here the 32, and he's going to take this one back to the 37-yard line. That throw, Charles, over the middle of the field, and a few too many bodies in there got picked. That's a normal situation, too, isn't it? No matter how hard you try and spread the field sometimes, there's always going to be a traffic jam, it feels like, towards the middle. And if there's any type of a missed throw, or maybe the ball's tipped, or just too many bodies in the area, an interception can result. Good starting field position for them as they come up first and 10 at their own 37. Now Aikman. The cards get to him here. He's brought down for a sack. Marcus Golden able to run him down for a loss of 12 that time. Boy, that's tough, Charles. First play of the drive, you're hoping to stay ahead of schedule. You take that huge sack, and now you're facing second and a mile. And the entire time, you were probably thinking the same thing I was. Either get rid of the ball safely, of course, or go down. The yardage he gave up on that play, that's going to be tough for them to make up. That huge loss on the sack makes this job much more difficult. It's now second down and 22 yards to go. Now a throw here, hold in. My next teammate used to tell me all the time, I hate experienced quarterbacks because no matter what, 
you really can't hide what you're doing. And I think that right there, he knew right away where the blitz was coming from, where his primary guy was going to be, and he ended up going to a secondary target for a nice game. I was just going to ask you, that wasn't the primary target. And he's so good at that, isn't he? I think he knew right away that he wasn't going to get to his primary guy. I think he read that as soon as he got to the line of scrimmage, knew where the pressure was going to come from, and said, I, I know how to do He's got a man complete. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. A big play that time through the air. 35 yards. Well, Bart, I'm not sure how this drive's going to end, but how about the way they flip field position there? A nice attacking play. They picked up a heck of a chunk of yardage. So the big play changes the complexion of things. Here's first and 10, just outside the 30. Aikman operating from the gun. Toward the right sideline, but it's incomplete. No sense risking anything there on first down, even though he's still in the pocket. He had a receiver out to his side, so just put that in a spot where the only people who can make a play on it are the trainers and the coaches. Well done. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and 10. Again, it's Aikman. He lets this one fly toward the back of the end zone. And this one, he incomplete. Oh, he couldn't hang on to it in the end zone, and that's one that'll haunt you. And now it brings up third down. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. Now it's Aikman. So the left side, it's complete. And he's brought down, but not before he reaches the eight-yard line. That's a big gainer on that play. And from experience, I can tell you, that's where defensive backs will come into the huddle and say, guys, how about some pass rush? But you're going to say it nicely because those big guys up front, they don't like being criticized very much. Quarterbacks in this league, you know they'll pick you apart if you give them time like that to find receivers downfield. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And this time they were waiting for him as he'll be knocked out before he can get back to the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of a yard there and now second down. He's already found the end zone once in this half and they do a nice job there pushing him backwards and denied his bid for a second score. from the nine, here's second and goal. And they try again with Montgomery. Oh, it springs free, Montgomery loses it. And the Cardinals have got it, going the other way. And they return just out across the 15 to the 16 yard line. Pardon me, you know how often we hear about the red zone, right? From the 20 yard line going in, that scoring zone, getting points on the board. A lot of teams call from the 10 yard line in the green zone. That's your money zone. He fumbles the ball inside the money zone. You have one job, take care of the ball. That didn't happen. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. They'll start out here with the option left. And good yardage as he gets this one up to about the 23. He'll pick up seven there on the first down keeper. Two minutes on the clock, second quarter, 7-0 ball game. Just a couple of minutes, we'll get you to Orlando and our good friend Jonathan Coachman. Coach will run through some of the numbers and the next-gen stats 
from this first half of football so far. And all the way down inside the 25 before he's out of bounds. A huge play there for Arizona. I don't think there's anyone who could possibly doubt how fast he could run in the open field. But if there were, he silenced those thoughts there. And that's the kind of play where you have to kind of catch your breath afterwards. So just give me a second here because when he shifted into high gear, he was an absolute blur out there. No substitute for speed. We talk about that all the time. The evidence was right there. Going to throw deep for the end zone. And this is incomplete. Oh, he had six points right in his hands, but could not hang on. The Steve is not going to make it easy for you. They're a physical group, and we just saw it there on that play. He came in, made the contact, just as he's trying to haul it in. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Cunningham. And it's caught. Touchdown, Cardinals. A 22-yard touchdown ground. And the Cardinals are just an extra point away from tying this game. For good reason, quarterbacks want to get the ball to the perimeter to their wide receivers for big plays. But in this situation, it felt like, based on coverage, he knew that he wanted his tight end to have the football, and for good reason. Now Matt Prater for the point after. It's up and good, and we're tied at seven here in quarter number two. So that drive, four plays, and it winds up in a touchdown for Arizona. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. A look at the running back, the man out of the backfield as he gears up to go again. I think he's still shaking his head a little. It was his fumble on the previous drive that led to the touchdown that has his tie. And sometimes it's worse on a runner who drops it like that to watch the other team take the ball downfield and score than maybe if they just returned it right away. You know what I mean? Because sometimes what happens that fast, you're right back out on the field. Instead, he had to watch it happen. Let's see if it affects him going forward the rest of the game. The Eagles offense set to begin their next drive. And last time, not only the turnover, but that turned into six points. They got to make up for that here. You always hear about empty possessions, but some are worse than others. You get an empty possession, pump the ball away, get yourself set to play defense. But when you turn it over, it changes momentum. And when they take it down, good and punch it in on it, that's a bad possession all the way around. Yeah, but you're hungry to get back out there, aren't you? You better be, because otherwise, it's going to be a long day for you. One play has him up past the 40 already, and another first and 10. Aikman will throw. And complete to Zach Ertz. And he's going to get this deep on Arizona's side of the field. A big play there for Philly. You ask tight ends about their favorite routes to run, and surprisingly, this will pop up as one of their staples because they run so many routes in the middle of the field. How about this one? Starts downfield, bends it to the corner. Great touch on the football, and they turn that one into a big play. So after the big play, look at this. All the way down at the 15 now on first and 10. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. And an incomplete pass. That'll stop the clock here with just under a minute to play in half number one. To this point, I've been impressed with the work defensively. They have not allowed a lot of receivers to run free. And there's another example, another incompletion. Second and ten. Out of the gun, it's Aikman. 
Oh, he'll want that one back. Incomplete. He doesn't drop too many in that department. Third down. So back-to-back -back incompletions. Third down here in 10, but you're still in field goal range. And that's the thing to keep in mind. They're in field goal range. So now you don't take any unnecessary risks, but you try and find a way to get back to what you were doing earlier in the drive in order to finish this one off. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and 10. He'll hit Jackson complete. And they corral him just a couple yards shy of the end zone. The Eagles going to take the first of their timeouts as the clock's going to stop with 47 seconds to go in half number one. They'll run for it with Montgomery. And they'll get it down just shy of the goal line at about the one. Now the Eagles will use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. Two of their three red zone trips so far, they've come up empty on. They'll look to reverse that trend on second and goal. They'll try to run this one in. And this time he is in. A great play there with his second touchdown here in this first half. And the Eagles have taken the lead. Extra point attempt to follow here. And he's got it. It's now a 14-7 ball game. So this drive spans seven plays. And it ends with a one-yard touchdown run. one away takes it at the seven and he'll go down as this drive will start at the 25 yard line driving at the line, the Cardinal offense. And with them trailing, there is still enough time to try to string a few plays together, maybe get in the field goal range. And that one drops down, incomplete. Good coverage there, forced the ball free, and it's second down. And I think they'd be well served to take that type of a physical approach against him the rest of the game. He's had his way so far, but on that last one, that worked quite well for the defense. So the incompletion, and now it's second and 10, again from the 25-yard line. Out of the gun here, it's Cunningham. And that nearly intercepted. It's incomplete. Now remember, he had a pick earlier, but couldn't reel that one in. They have to like what they've done defensively here at the outset of this drive. They forced a couple of incomplete passes, bring up a third and 10. Don't be surprised to bring a little pressure on this snap. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has them start at a third and 10. This time, they stay on the ground. And this will not get close to the first down marker as he's brought down at the 26. The Eagles will take their third and final timeout as they'll stop the clock with 24 seconds to go in this first half.
Here comes the Cardinals punter now as he's on to kick it away. His first punt, 45 yards. This looks good as well. Officially, that'll go as a 52-yard punt. Not too shabby. And control of the football, switching hands with very little time remaining until the half. Already at the line, this Philly offense set to go. And with a seven-point lead, they'll likely look to take this to the locker room and not really press the issue. And he'll be upended here after a pickup of three, getting it out to the 25. So we've come to halftime here in Philly with the Eagles on top. As we'll send you down the coast now to Orlando, that's where we find Jonathan Coachman ready with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome, everybody, to our abbreviated version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. First order of business, though. Let's get a look at the next-gen stats in that first half for Arizona. And I can imagine the halftime discussions are about how can we improve the running game? They have not had success so far, and it's reflected on the scoreboard. Meanwhile, for the Eagles, they had a little bit more success on the ground than their opponents did, and that should set them up well for the second half to come. Okay, Coach, yeah, adjustments likely going to play a big role in this third quarter in what's been a tight contest so far. turn to start the half as this will be a touchback. And the Eagles ready to go on offense to begin this third quarter. Much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day. One score game. First and ten here. To throw is Aikman. Looking left sideline incomplete. Well, listen, when you've got the lead, there's absolutely no sense trying to fit a ball in where you shouldn't. You can see the coaching in his head taking place on that play because he saw he had a receiver in the area. They just put it well over his head out of harm's way. So following the incompletion, here second and 10 from the 25. Now Aikman looking to throw. And he'll take this beyond the line of scrimmage as he slides to a hole. They'll wind up with positive yardage. It's a gain of three, but now it's third down. Looked to me like they adopted what my kindergarten teacher always said. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. And finally, able to hold him in check. He'd been carving him up running the ball. That's the first time I think I've seen where the coverage was good downfield and they accounted for him and stopped him for a short pickup. Yeah, I don't think it was a big adjustment, but much more emphasis on making sure they knew where he was when he decided to take off and go. So it would appear they will not be able to add to their lead on this opening drive of the second half. Yeah, if another touchdown was scored there, now we're talking about a two-score game, and they're probably on their way of creating an excellent gap between them and their pursuers. But how about the defense there able to step up and keep themselves in this one? So this will be accepted as it moves the offense backwards. So the special teams penalty cost some yardage there as they come out on first and ten. Now Cunningham. 
Throwing the out route incomplete. That's Smith. And he takes us beyond the 35 before going out of bounds. If you run an out route, it's likely you end up near the sideline. And what did we just see there? The toe tap. You got it. The benefits of practice. Toe tapping, foot dragging, picking it up, and making sure it was a catch. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. And a good swarm to the football defensively as they get him down at about the 40. Two yards the gain on the keeper, and it's second down. That was a pretty good job defensively to hold him to a two-yard run, but I've got to think this offensive line, they're asking their quarterback for a different type of a run, one that they rely on, one they have confidence in, one they feel like they can block. They'll wind up getting three on the keeper there, but it leads to a third down. Anytime you decide to use your quarterback as a runner, most of the time when you design a play, you're expected to break a little bit bigger than this one because when you run him on short gains, your risk-reward and him taking hits, I'm not sure that's the play up there really looking for. Here's Cunningham. He finds Bolden. And he has another first down as they get the ball down to the Eagles 36. He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot. And they connected there and picked up a first down. So from Philadelphia territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 36. Looking to throw, Cunningham escaping the pressure right. And he'll protect himself at the end here as he winds up getting pretty decent yardage. Nice work to get seven out of that, and it's second down. Well, he did a nice job keeping his eyes downfield, waiting for someone to get open. But once the pressure forced his eyes down to see the rush, it was time to make a break for it. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive, they went three and out. down. Here's the run with Anderson. And not much of a hole there as he gets it down to about the 24-yard line. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. I have to think a major focus of the halftime means had to be figured out how to create space for the running game to get operating. Well, what you pointed out to me at half seems accurate. That line has struggled to sustain blocks. Yeah, I would agree with that totally. They've got to focus on staying on their double teams at the first level, make sure that block's secured. Into heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Rodney McLeod. And the Eagles are going to take over here. 22-yard line. Well, certainly not his best throw that time and not a good time to make it, Charles, when they were a nickel with five defensive backs on the field. And that's exactly why you have those five DBs out there. You want extra speed on the field, guys who have ball skills and understand what the passing game can do and gives them a chance to react and make a play on the football, and they take one of those away. The Eagles offense back out onto the field. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. They'll start on the ground with Montgomery. And he's able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. Now, they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse, and I believe he'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. Now Aikman to throw on second down. 
And oh, he's unable to hold on to that defensively. A potential game changer, but it falls incomplete. It certainly didn't appear that that's where he wanted to go with the ball initially, so he tried to get something out of it by dumping it off to his running back unsuccessfully. So the incomplete pass on the last play, and that leads us to a third and three. Back to throw. Looking deep for his tight end, Ertz. Oh, not sure he saw the linebacker there as that's batted down and incomplete. But you got to think that sooner or later, they're going to hit one of those, but the coverage has been excellent thus far, and it was again on the last play. The Eagles send out their punter now as he'll come on to kick this one away. And a fair catch called for and made just inside the 35-yard line. It's just a 32-yard punt with no return. And the Cards will take over first and 10. And the football back in the hands of the Arizona Cardinals. And there are parts of their last drive they'd like to emulate. And, of course, they'd like to forget the inning, the interception. But they did put together, Charles, a nice sustained drive to get him down the field. Yeah, and unfortunately for them, the only thing that matters is part two, right? Because once they threw the interception and finished off the drive, that does them no good to go back and say, well, you know, we had a good one going. Finish things off. That's the only way you can get it done. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. And he'll get up to the 43-yard line. So they'll get eight out of that completion. And it'll be second down. And at his size, he's a smaller back. You can get him to football. He can kind of get lost, make someone miss. It's good for him. Yeah, it's great for him. I like what you said there. Sometimes he gets lost in the traffic a little bit. But get him out in the open field into some space. That plays to his strengths the best and keeps him out of it where all the big boys are, you know, make him make someone miss in the open field. So they'll get a little extra time to come up with his third down play as we play three quarters. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. And welcome back. We are in the city of brotherly love, Philadelphia. It's Cardinal football, but they trail here as we get set to bring you the fourth and final quarter. The offense on third down today. They've converted three out of five thus far. They're looking at third in the nose of the football. Here's Cunningham from the gun. He's got Smith here. And he'll lose yardage here back at the 41. It'll be a loss of four yards on the play. And that's going to bring up the fourth down. Back of a play there to get to him quickly and get him down for a loss. I think they did a really nice job getting ready for this game, scouting, watching film, and understanding defensively what the play design was. Here comes the Cardinals punter now, as he's on here to punt it away. Averaging 50 yards of boot so far as this one's away. I call that a punt of 38 yards officially. And the Eagles will have it taking over first and 10. And Philadelphia's offense ready to go again. Their defense got the stop, forced the punt, and now you really start to monitor the clock as they nurse this slim lead. To Montgomery to begin the drive. Fights forward for only about a yard up to the 21. I like a guy who understands the situation. I also like a guy who you look at him and you say, that looks like a guy who knows the coach is going to say, guess what? You drop this one, you'll be carrying around a training facility for an entire week. Maybe flashback to high school or college, <laughs> carrying it around campus, right? The old gauntlet drill, right? Anyone get the ball out while he's, while he's sitting in class and bring it back to the coach? He's in big trouble. He's going to let this go deep for Jackson. And that is incomplete. A deep ball down that right sideline, and he made sure that he put it where either his guy was going to catch it or no one was. Woo! 
The Eagles on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This is third and nine. They're going to look to throw. Zach Ertz has it complete. And he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. And that certainly appears to be a critical conversion right there because not only do they keep the drive going, they take valuable time off the clock as well. They have to feel really good about that last completion. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and 10. He'll drop to throw. Over the middle, that's caught by Owens. And he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. Well, that should be a reminder defensively, and I think it's a reminder to myself because you just can't sell out to stop the run. There's still enough time that this offense can move the football through the air, even on first and second downs, and they obviously picked the right spot to throw the ball there. So in the Cardinal territory now, it's first and 10, down at the 33. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down, second and right in the yard. And a lot of times, these plays, they either go for nothing or they go for big yardage. And here, they got to the outside, turned it upfield, and ended up getting a nice little gain out of it. Here's second and a yard. Again, he'll drop the throw. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. Another nice pick up through the air, and I think a lot of people might expect them to run the ball in this situation, Brandon, but with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swings, slants, quick outs, things that they consider safe. So here's a first and 10 now, down inside the 20. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. And he'll take this down for about four yards, down to the 15. I like that run right there, partner. Not the flashiest run, not the one that's going to break for big yardage, but he understands the situation. And taking care of the football, paramount, and he got it done. Nursing that slim lead, you're exactly right. Hold on to that ball. This drive's taken more than three minutes off the clock already as they come up on second down. And he'll fight his way down right around the 12. He'll wind up getting three on the keeper there, but it leads to a third down. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. So it's Eagle football here as we get you reset. They're facing a critical third down now as they try to hold on to this lead. From the shotgun, Aikman. And the throw there gonna be incomplete. But plain and simple, that's the second time today that he's dropped a pass. And that one, I think maybe even a little easier than the earlier one that he dropped, surprising. And was this game announced as a night game prior to and maybe his rhythm got was just off, he's got know. thrown off. He's got to wake up, enjoy the sunshine and go play. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. And his kick is good. And they will move up by 10 now, 17 to seven. So that one's CD going to make the road back a lot more difficult. Oh, there's no doubt about that. You know that we're playing on the other sideline for a miss because now, as you pointed out, a very difficult road. Down two scores, you don't just need a touchdown. You need a chain of events to go your right. way. You've got to score. Somehow get the ball back and score again. The odds of that happening, not great in your favor. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. 
All eyes on the Cardinals now. Down on the scoreboard. And time, a huge factor. It's been a struggle to score all day, and now they need to do it twice here late to have a chance. First and ten, Cunningham. And his pass incomplete. Not only did he have a chance to scan the field there, it felt like he had a chance to scan it twice. The protection was that good. Unfortunately for him, the coverage downfield, equally good. Following the incomplete pass, here they go again. Second and ten from the 25. Cunningham looking to throw. This is Anderson. They do get a yard there, but only a yard. Leaves them with third and nine looming. And right now, defensively, you love that, don't you? I mean, you'll give them that play. And they'll take it every single time. This is almost like nickeling and diming it downfield, and too much time's going to run off the clock. And it looks like they've got 60 Bs on the field here for a third and nine. Cunningham to throw. He gets it into the hands of Larry Fitzgerald. And he is going to have a Cardinals first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. This defense has certainly had an outstanding second half, haven't they? I know they just gave up a first down there. And for the offense, they're hoping that that's something that they can jumpstart with and maybe start to move the ball a little bit better. But it's been tough sledding for them here the entire second half. Now a dump off here complete. Not much there, only a yard. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They're tackling them almost on the spot. That means they have to run extra plays, harder to move it. Now Cunningham. He's going to let it fly. And this is incomplete. Oh, it looked like he had a pretty good line on that one. That would have been a big play, but he could not pull it in. Tried to go for the big one there on second down. Now they're likely down to their final two plays. And you know they've got to keep going for the big shot, right? So defensively, you play what they call top down. Nothing behind you. Make everything get completed in front. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And that will be incomplete. They weren't scared to let it fly, but it falls to the ground and brings up fourth down. I like the fact that he took the shot deep downfield. Even if you don't get the catch, maybe you get a defensive penalty and pick up the yardage that way. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter. Let's see how this plays out. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. He's going to let it fly. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining, and the Eagles are going to take over in great field position. Well, they had to take one final shot at the end zone, but now things are looking really bleak. And I agree with that totally. You had to take the shot if they did score. You know, whether you call it a miracle or not, you line up, onside kick, get the ball back, throw one more in the end zone, who knows? Had to take the chance, it just was unsuccessful. First down, here's the run to Montgomery. And he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. It, the Cardinals going to use the first of their timeouts as they stop it with 28 seconds to go in this football game. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. Again, they'll go ground with Montgomery. Now the Cards going to call another timeout, their second, as they'll stop the clock with 24 seconds to go in the game.
Aikman on third down. And too much juice. It'll be out of bounds, incomplete. Love the idea, love the concept, but you got to leave a little room on the sideline so he can fade into it when he makes the catch. That was thrown too close to it for the receiver to make a play. And with things looking pretty good on the scoreboard, they're going to keep the offense out there and go for it here on fourth. Montgomery, they'll run for it. And he's not going to get there. Might have even lost a yard. He only needed a yard, but he couldn't even get back to the line of scrimmage. And the Cardinal defense is going to get the football back. And defensively, they were ready for that. A full-on blitz on fourth down, and they stop them short of the marker. Oh, someone's got to feel really good about that, and that's the defensive coordinator. He dialed up a great run blitz defense, and they hit it just right. Stack that thing up. They're going to feel awesome going to the bench after that big play. Ready to go with their next drive, and at the line, the Cardinal offense. They might be thinking this is close to a lost cause here. Got to play it out. What do they need to do? Well, they have a thought process in mind already, but they can't get ahead of themselves. They know that they need to score quickly. Yep, two-score game. Onside kick and get the ball back, and then score again. But they can't worry about the last two points. The only thing that matters is scoring quickly, then they'll take it from there. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead, fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and 10. One final shot. They'll look to throw. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And that will be incomplete. As time has run out on this football game. So it's a victory here for the Philadelphia Eagles. And it was their defense that really made the 